and take us with you wherever you go. 1460 WVOX. Stay tuned now for Westchester Eye on the Radio with Peter Moses, John Sharan, and Ardina Seward on 1460 WVOX. Welcome, everybody, to Westchester Eye on the Radio. I'm Peter Moses with my co host, John Sharan and Ardina Seward. How are you guys today? Doing well since uh, Snowmageddon didn't really happen. It was how, bad. How much enough. did you get? It was about three inches, but I mean, it was lightweight snow, so it was. Wasn't it was, lightweight and white plains. It, no, was, it, was, it, was, it was wet and heavy. Extremely heavy, heavy, uh, heavy snow. Not the amounts aren't heavy, but it was uh, wet and heavy. We got like seven or eight inches. Well, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, down, yeah. down here in Nourishell, I guess we got around four and a half. Yeah. Right. So, folks, usually, our Ardina is the person who books about 90, 95% of the shows. Um, and this week is no exception. And usually, she sends John and I. A brief bio of the person who's appearing on the air with us the next day. She usually sends it on Sunday. Usually. Uh, this yeah. week, we got a notification from her. Read the notification, please. That she would not, she refused to give us any knowledge and any background on the person who's a Matter of fact, this is what she wrote. I'm mm-hmm. agreeing with John. We should read it. We will have a female guest tomorrow for the show. I don't want to give out too much info because it will spoil the surprise. She is a Westchester mom that lives in an affluent neighborhood. She has an unusual business, LOL, but she didn't put a comma between business and LOL, which she should have. She would be in studio and providing the weather is okay. And then the rest of it is about our next week's show that uh, she asked Jerry Azar, who used to work at uh, Channel 7 with Ardina, uh, to sub for next week while John is in Phoenix playing with cars um anyway so the woman sitting across from me um her name is her last name is christian her first name is brooke with an e and um what is your unusual profession brooke christian (laughs) well uh i run a sex empowerment platform geared to moms it's called flirty girl and i talk about the collision between sex and motherhood and the collision oh it's a big collision a big one it's like an 18 car pile up on 95 it's a big deal not 684 pick a highway okay. any highway <laughs> What's and you- um how did you end up creating this business um, well, it's a very personal story. I, have, I hope so. Yeah. Well, it's actually not salacious at all. I didn't say salacious. Um, I have two children. They're young. I have a nine-year-old and a five-year-old. And when I had the five-year-old, I got slayed with horrific postpartum depression, suicidal. It was horrible. And as I was healing from that, um, I started sort of to reconnect with myself. I got my body back. I sort of started exploring um, being a woman and not just being a mother um, because we lose ourselves a bit when we have children. So in that exploration, sex was a part of it. And I was trying to reconnect with that part of my life. And my husband, God bless him, brought home a sex toy and we used it. And Sex before this toy was like analog television with like the wires coming out of the top, you know, and like the fuzz and the noise. And sex after the toy was like 4D IMAX. I couldn't believe it. I was like, is this what I've been That's missing? rather transformational. It's <laughs> launched a massive business. I'm so happy John feels he can talk. Yeah. Why not? Everyone has sex. We all came from sex. Everyone has sex. So I started telling my girlfriends about it, like a Gymboree class. And I was saying to them, do you know about this? You know, do you know about this toy or, you know, nice toys in general? And they all said no. And I said, you got to get it. And women trust women. You know, the only one I've ever met who thought the Barney doll was uh, was a sex toy, but that's another story. <laughs> I don't do purple sex toys. <laughs> oh, now I know. like my sex toys to be in a black or white 
frame of mind. Ebony or ivory. Ebony or ivory, exactly. Class it up. So women trust women. If uh, my girlfriend tells me to try a lipstick, I do. If we say this hair dryer is amazing, we do it. So I said, try this toy. And they all went and bought it. And they all came back and said, whoa. Oh, my God. We're, my husband and I are having more sex. Sex is better. I'm craving sex more. And... I realized that there was an underserved market here. I used to work at magazines, and I said, nobody's talking to these women. We got to. Somebody's got to. So you created a website. So I launched a business. Yes. So I created a website, but in these days, social media is kind of everything. Your we're going to have to cut you second. right there because we're going to go to our first commercial break. Um, we have with us today, the what is the name of your company again? Flirty Girl. Flirty Girl. We have Brooke Christian. We're going to be talking about sex today and intimacy. Uh, they're not always they're not always the same. This is Westchester Eye on the radio on WVOX and WVOX.com. We're going to be going for a long Fox News and business news break. And we'll be back after that. And I think the subject matter is such that you all should listen and call your neighbors and, and friends and wives and husbands. Tell them to listen to. Let's return now to Westchester Eye on the Radio with Peter Moses, John Sharan, and Ardina Seward on 1460 WVOX. Welcome back to the next segment, the second segment of <laughs> Westchester Eye on the Radio. A little tongue-tied there, John? No, I was just thinking of something else, and I wasn't sure which segment we were in. <laughs> <It> came out. <laughs> But the point is that this is the second segment, and uh, we're approaching our halfway mark here on the Westchester Eye on the Radio. I'm John Charan, along with our Dina Seward and Peter Moses, and today we have a special in-studio guest, Brooke Christian, who is the founder and uh, creator of Flirty Girl. And you were just about to tell us, uh, when we were interrupted by the last break, about how you created the uh, website and the uh, company. Yeah, so obviously every business needs a website. It's... The platform and sort of the resume of, of your brand. Uh, but the majority of it is social media based because that's where we live now and that's where moms live now. Um, and if you're a blogger, quote unquote, what you really mean is you write long posts on Instagram. So um, yes, I have a website and it's beautiful and it's great and it explains everything. And um, I do post content on there. I love writing about my life and the struggles of it um, when it comes to sex and body image and motherhood. Um, but my Instagram is where m most of my content and message lives. It's at Flirty Girl Guide on Instagram. And um, it boomed in a second. I mean, I also sell sex toys because the way my business is structured is there's the message, which we haven't talked about yet, but the message is we can be sexy and be mothers. They don't have to be mutually exclusive, but it is tough to do because we're so burdened and busy and sort of lost in the um, minutia of our lives so how do we separate those two? And if we're going to, then the sexy part should be amazing. You know, the, the, there should be no mediocrity in our sex lives. <laughs> so how can we make that better? How can we boost our self-confidence? Because sexiness is just confidence. It's all it is. It has nothing to do with short skirts or cleavage or anything like that. So that's the message. And then the activation of that message are sex toys. Because the reality is 70% of women need them in order to have a great time in bed. So you can reach my online store through my website. But what I do is I curate a collection of them. I sort of call down from the 30,000 products that are out there. Like here are the 20 best. Here are the only 20 that you need to look at. Because the truth is... Most moms, women, are not going to roll up to the Romantic Depot, you know, in Elmsford in their um, minivans or SUVs with their lacrosse stickers on the back. They're just not going to do that. So where do they go for trusted advice about what to use in the bedroom? So that's effectively the two sides of what I do and how I do it. Now, we've got a situation where women or anybody who becomes a parent, suddenly uh, suddenly your life 
changes drastically. Your life uh, transforms from focused about what you're doing, what's important to you. Now the child comes first, more than one child. The children come first. You lose your time. You don't have much personal time anymore. How do you get your individual individuality back? It's really hard. Um, and the truth is you have to make time for it, which requires effort. And if that means you have to schedule your date nights, if you have to set, schedule self-care, if you feel sexiest when you have your hair done, um, if you feel sexiest when you're wearing, you know, beautiful makeup, then you have to set time down in order to do it. And I hate saying that. Because we already have enough on our plate. I hate adding to it, but there's no other way around it. If you're married or in a relationship, you have to date each other again. You absolutely have to. You have to flirt. You have to make time for each other where you're not calling each other mom and dad. You know, because that's not sexy. You have to call each other by your real names. And when you're in, you know, the revolving door of parenthood, you wind up saying like, Daddy, are you doing bedtime tonight? Oh, mommy, can you go get them water? Like, I don't want to date that person. <laughs> I want to date John or Mike or what have you. So you have to commit to making those special moments and that special time. And honestly, technology nowadays makes it really easy. It is so easy to pick up your cell phone and send, you know, a little flirty text to your partner. That takes 10 seconds to do. But it has such huge payoff. You know, anticipation is the number one aphrodisiac and you can't buy it. You know, it beats oysters by a mile. And so just creating that energy between the two of you doesn't have to be dirty. It can be sweet. That builds intimacy. That builds connection. Um, and truthfully, if you can be connected both with yourself and your partner sexually, the tide lifts all boats. Like you're going to be a happier mom. You're going to be a better partner. You're going to be a better friend. I tell women all the time, I'm like, Friday night, don't have sex with your partner. You tell me what Saturday morning looks like in your house. I guarantee you and your partner are like nitpicking each other and like, why didn't you do that? Why didn't you do this? And, you know, soccer practice is a nightmare. Have sex on Saturday night and tell me what Sunday morning looks like. Chances are you might pinch each other's, you know, tushes in the kitchen you're gonna be like much more accepting if there's pancake batter on the floor it's just a nicer environment for everybody but it takes effort and i wish it didn't but and it does and, and and as people become parents longer and longer and haven't been involved in this sort of thing i'm sure a lot of them lose confidence what do they do to gain confidence back to be able to do this sort of work that is the hardest part um, for women especially, we are our worst critics. We What we see in the mirror is not what people see. And I honestly tell women, please trust what other people tell you. When you come out, you know, downstairs and your husband says that you look beautiful, trust him. When you show up in lingerie in the bedroom and he thinks you just look drop dead gorgeous, believe him. And... And that's a start. And the second part is women are sexiest, we all are, when we're doing what we love, right? The And that's what I was saying before. The sexiest woman in the room is the one who knows herself and is enveloped in it. And that's where we need to start, for sure, doing what we love. And since the music started, we're going to take, have to take another break. You're listening to Westchester Eye on the Radio here on WVOX 1460 AM and heard worldwide at WVOX.com. I'm John Turan, along with our Dina Seward and Peter Moses, and our special in-studio guest, Christian of Flirty Girl, the founder of the company, who's teaching women about how to find their sexual self again after motherhood. And we'll have more conversation about that and other things. Remember, you can phone in to our program if you have any questions for our guest or phone in number is 914-636-0110 again this is westchester eye on the radio and we'll be back after a brief fox news break with world and national news here is the latest update from fox news radio on 1460 wvox 
News. I'm Rich Dennison. President Trump says he'll cooperate with the House Judiciary Committee's sweeping investigation into his administration. The committee requesting information for more than 80 individuals and entities. The Democrat-led House investigation is very broad, touching on allegations of public corruption, abuse of power, and obstruction of justice. Fox's Catherine Herridge in Washington. The president tweeting that he's told FEMA to give Alabama the A-plus treatment as the state responds to a deadly tornado that's killed at least 23 people. A battle to oust the remnants of ISIS is taking place in eastern Syria. Fox's Trey Yinks. The final major battle against ISIS is underway in the Syrian city of Bagos. Democratic forces there say that this group should be defeated within days. U.S.-backed Syrian forces say they had to slow their advance because ISIS militants were using civilians as human shields. This. Stay airborne with us each and every day at 1460 on your AM dial or streaming live right now at WVOX.com. Better yet, download the WVOX app and take us with you wherever you go. 1460 WVOX. Let's return now to Westchester Eye on the Radio with Peter Moses, John Sharan, and Ardina Seward on 1460 WVOX. Welcome back. Thanks for sticking with us. We are into our next half, our next exciting half hour. And why? Because you're listening to Westchester Eye on the Radio. I am Ardina Seward, along with Peter Moses, John Charan, and our, I want to say, I, wanna, I don't want to even say special guest. I want to say unique guest named Brooke Christian. And Brooke is, I would say, uh, that Brooke is the new Dr. Ruth, a younger, blonder version of Dr. Ruth. But beyond that, she also merchandises lingerie, uh, helps women with self-esteem. And and, and sex toys as well. And and sex toys. But she also... um, um, She's a marriage counselor. Well, she's beyond that. That scares me. That scares me. I know, but without (laughs) the high-pitched German cackle. (laughs) Without the high-pitched German cackle. Exactly. I do save marriages for the short term, for sure. Right. But this... this, No, I want to get to to the perception of conservative Westchester because what you do I think that people this is my my bias I guess tend to associate it more with the progressive millennials of New York City and we're talking about affluent moms in affluent Westchester and it kind of it's kind of shocking that they need this kind of support system am I wrong or am I just being naive no 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 they need it more than anybody um, and here, here's, here's a funny story that sort of is an example of that. I have young children, like I said, my nine year old plays field hockey and she loves it, which means every weekend I'm on a field in my little folding chair with my like cup of coffee at eight in the morning. I don't show up to these things looking glam. I'm in sweatpants and my hat, um, which is also part of what I say. Like, I'm not saying you have to look gorgeous seven days a week, I kind of say like 20% of the time, can you pull yourself together? You know, <laughs> like for a couple of hours, once a week, can you pull it together? Because I look homeless at pickup also. And so in my moments of looking horrible on a Saturday morning, I'm sitting there in my folding chair and no one will sit with me. None of the mothers will sit with me at field hockey. And you can hear them whisper when I sort of like cross from the parking lot over. Well, and uh, because of why? Because of what I do. I mean, it's very known what I do, especially in my, my very small community. I mean, that I get is, recognized. That but, is stunning. I, I, and, and here's the thing. I don't care because you can't do what I do unless you have thick skin, right? And I just find it kind of sad, to be honest with you. I mean, those are the women who need me the most. Yeah, I would you know? say so. Absolutely. They're the most repressed. They're the, they're the ones who are faking it outside and inside bedroom you know they're the ones posting everything on social media like everything's perfect when i know that they're going through a separation you know and because they haven't had sex in a year or they have or they have a boyfriend on the side i mean many many women have boyfriends on the side um women statistically have more affairs than men we're just better at hiding it because we're smarter (laughs) but you know that's been I my craftier, but okay. Yeah, <laughs> but that's been my experience. Um, 
you're either really into me and like really into my message and I'll get stopped and people will say, oh my God, I follow you. Oh my God, it's so amazing. What do I need? And that's great. Or it's kind of the total opposite side of I'm not going to sit with you because I don't want to be associated with you. And that's challenging. I have kids at elementary school. I don't, I do worry about them being made fun of or embarrassed by me or, you know, what have you. I figure they're young now and I'll cross that bridge when they get to it. Um, and I'm sure my son will be absolutely horrified that his mother <laughs> talks about this. But it's frustrating because I'm not a porn star. I'm not doing anything, um, you know, ridiculous. Scandalous. Scandalous. Exactly. exactly. Right. I, I'm i doing something very, t- I do it very tastefully. It's t- intentionally tasteful because I don't think sex has to be gross and perceived as, you know, hot pink leopard. You know, I don't think that that's how it has to be. I think it can be just as beautiful as we are. Do you agree, by the way, that there's a difference between in- intimate intimacy and sexuality? Yeah, for sure. I think intimacy leads to the best sexual experiences. I agree with that. I think that if you can connect emotionally, you are going to connect physically. Um, and that's something that we are missing. Well, number one in society, but certainly in you know parenting situations, it's hard to sit down and have a real conversation where you feel understood. Um, and for women, you know, we are emotionally connected to our sexuality. Men are more visually connected you know that's just biology their arousal is tied to visual stimulation which is why lingerie works a variation by on the that, way a variation on that idea that men give love to get sex women give, give sex, sex to get, get love. love it is so true and the reality is that i've actually never heard that before. yeah that's an old really? does it feel true yeah yeah well, what about uh, i want to talk about, a little bit about why someone like robert Kraft who at 77 would go to massage parlors. A widower. A widower, a widower, exactly. But but here's a guy who ha- has enough money to, um, and he had a, has, has or had a girlfriend, and he was involved in this rather, I don't want to say conservative circle, but respectable circle of, 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 of people. So I don't understand it either. I would just like to preface this that I am a raging Pats fan. Go past the entire way. Our nobody, condolences. Nobody talks to me on Sundays. You're just jealous. It's okay. Yes, but, um, but they're, they're not talking to you. If, if they're in this area, they're not talking to you not because of what you do or, yeah. or, or your feelings on Robert Kraft. It's because true New Yorkers will not really support the Patriots. Absolutely. So, so, but I can't, I mean, so this conversation has come up about Robert Kraft a lot because not only am I a Pats fan, but it's like, Amazing. I don't get it. Because if you have that much money, why wouldn't you just pay for somebody to come to your room where it's not like in the back of a nail salon? I don't understand. I don't think there's anything wrong with him getting his needs met. I'm just shocked that he would get his needs met in that pedestrian way. Honestly, I don't get it. Well, he he obviously <laughs> prefers the Walmart version of going I after it rather so. rather rather than trying to get something a little bit more sophisticated online. <laughs> but that's a window into him, huh? Well, that do we, you like, never could saw? Could but, be. Okay, this is a, a, it's a two part question. One, do you feel that prostitution should be legalized? And two, do a lot of the husbands in this affluent Westchester uh, uh, circle that uh, that you work in do many of them go to prostitutes? Uh, okay, so the way I operate my business is that I'm a vault, I'm a priest, a lawyer, a doctor, so I'm not going to give away any specifics, but yes, they do that. Yes, they do that. I mean, absolutely. I would not say it's for sex. My experience has been strippers and what Robert Croft did, you know, a massage parlor, but yes, absolutely the first part of your question was, do I think prostitution should be legal? Absolutely. I think that women should be in charge of their own bodies and should be able to use them for whatever purposes that they want. And if that means having sex for money, go for it. Um, my experience with the men who participate in those activities 
are the ones who are not getting served at home. I mean, that's a very big generalization, but uh, they are lonely. That's a lonely position to be in. And that's part of the problem. That's the lack of intimacy. That's the lack of sex that people are having. I mean, so many people are in sexless marriages. Oh, 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 when we, oh, I want to talk about, uh, we're coming up on our, on our, on our break soon. I want to talk about why most marriages that you know of break up. And is sex a fact or lack thereof a factor in those marriages breaking up? Uh, and I also want to extend the invitation to the audience in case you have a call or in case you have a question or a comment. You should call in at 914-636. That includes soccer moms from Wakabook. That's right. 914-636-0110. Keep it clean. And stay with us. You are listening to Brooke Christian, who is talking about S-E-X. I said it. I didn't say it. I spelled it. S-E-X, doggone it. Uh, and you are listening to Westchester Eye on the radio, WVOX.com. So stay with and us. And WVOX. And WVOX. 1460 AM. 1460 AM. Westchester Eye on the radio with Peter Moses, John Sharan, and Ardina Seward on 1460 WVOX. Welcome back to the final quarter hour of Westchester Eye and the Radio. I'm going to not mention all of our names because if you've been listening to the show, you know who we all are. We have with us today Brooke Christian, I, uh, who who owns a business called Flirty Girl. Flirty Girl, and it's on, and you can it's www.flirtygirl.com. No, it's no, not. No, it's, it's not. not. I'm sorry. Tell, tell us what, what it's. What? It's Flirty Girl Guide, like a guidebook. dot com, and on Instagram, it's at. Flirty Girl Guide. Because whoever owns FlirtyGirl.com um, is offering to sell you that domain. That's I just right. I, I looked ah, that up a little while ago. Right. Um, I am wondering when you encounter the husbands, what do they say to you about about all about your business? They must think that you're the greatest thing since sliced bread, and I would imagine most of them come on to you. Okay, so that's entirely right. They basically give me their credit cards and say, my wife can spend as much money as she possibly wants. Probably the only business where that happens. <laughs> um, there is no budget. And yes, they, they almost every single one of them says, talk to my wife. Does my wife follow you? Does my wife know you? Um, everything you say is right and it's true. I just want to have sex with her. I just, I think she's amazing. I just want to, I want to have sex with her all the time. It's her that keeps saying, no, talk to her. Um, but how many of those guys also hit on you? Almost every single one. Okay. That's the other part. Uh, yeah. you, can't, you can't see her on the radio, but you can on the internet. And, and Brooke Christian is, is not your average uh, suburban mom. From Northern Westchester. Uh, well, let's just put well, it that way. I do look like that a lot. I just don't look no, like no, that you, today. You, fa- facially <laughs> and, and every other way, you, you really could never look that way. Uh, do you remember there, um, Regis Philbin had a co-host um, in this in the 80s named Cindy Garvey, the ex-wife. She was of, married to the baseball player. Yes, she, was she married, had been very married. Sweet. To, um, Cindy, you, to Marvin me, Hamlish you look very much like Cindy Garvey. And that's a wholesome, huge compliment. Wholesomely sexy. There you go. Thank you. Uh, uh, you know, Approachably uh, sexy. Just like Cindy Crawford is, 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 is a gorgeous woman, but she, and she, there's an exoticism about her, but it's more about that she looks approachably sexy as hell. Did you just compare me to Cindy Crawford? Uh, personality wise, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, um, I, yes, think she's, I, guess, I think she's a little taller than yeah, you. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit more. And she went to Northwestern, which people don't often she's super know. She's smart. She's a really Super bright woman. Smart. I get hit what on a lot. What is the weirdest thing that a woman has said? To you? Let's say we, you talked about having sexless marriages, and mm-hmm. there are quite a few of them out there. Mm-hmm. Um, the women who are having long-time sexless marriages, what are the strange questions they ask you? Because they must have some really difficult things to talk about with you. You must also be a therapist in some way. I'm 100% an acting amateur therapist. What winds up happening with me and my clients or followers is we like, it, I just become friends with all of them because we're talking about their most intimate moments and they're coming to me at their most vulnerable time. And I just, I just connect with them. I would say the women who come to me from sexless marriages, those are not, those are sad conversations. Those are, those are women who are 
bereft and sad and whose self-esteem is really low do and the, frustrated. Do the toys help them? And are the, they mostly then doing the, using them for alone themselves. With themselves? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, because a sexless marriage, by the time they've come to me, is not about sex, even a little bit. It's about much more deep-rooted um, emotional, financial, you know, deeper issues. The sex is just, you know, a symptom of the deeper issue. But those are sad conversations. The fun conversations are, um, I have to say, second marriages. Women or, sec- you know, women who have been divorced and then are on their second lives. Those are fun. I mean, I I get a little jealous about those. Like those women are having a grand old time and they're starting, they've become more confident. One, because they're older. Two, because they've gone through the ringer. Three, because now it's their life that they're choosing. Those women can be quite kinky and I kind of love that. And you sell kinky paraphernalia on I can on request. I have, I have like nipple clamps on my website, which I love. I think they're so much fun. Um, I try to sell as much of those as possible because they're not as scary as people think. But I do hold the kink back a bit. But on a one-to-one level, I can. I have a lot of kink product. I can without. And, and you do. And you have you have trunk shows where you. Yeah, I do for sure. Um, one of the other ways I do it is uh, women get a bunch of their friends together. You know, ten to thirty. Somebody hosts, much like a jewelry party, and I come and I give you know, a little talk about how can we make all of this better? What are some five easy ways to sex it up? There used to be a, a word for those parties. They called them stupper, stupperware. Stupperware? <laughs> stupperware? <laughs> That's amazing. My dad says stup all the time, and it makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> now, 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 when did you form the company, and how quickly has it grown, and to what level are we talking about in terms of number of customers? So I formed it about four years ago, um, and it was instantly a hit because sex sells even to moms i mean sex just sells and then i always had a long-term plan for it like i said i used to work in marketing at magazines so i sort of always had um you know business plan and goals of where i wanted it to go and so slowly but surely look i don't have an assistant i don't have a nanny you know i i live a very um work from home mom life where up until my two children were both in full-time school which was this year you know i'd have to sort of piecemeal my time to work on this but even then it grew enormously where now i get paid to make speeches and i'm paid for my content and you know at my sales have quadrupled and all of that and then there are super exciting extensions that are coming like a podcast and um other media that people will see so it's growing now that i have more time to commit to it and it's growing so quickly and, a, and, and how many how many people are we actually talking about on a annualized year I so i have about thirteen thousand followers mm-hmm. um i and a lot of clients. I okay. don't like to say, I mean, thousands of clients okay. for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, and I would say that all of my numbers are organic. In the Instagram social media world, there's a lot of false numbers sure, that are lot, out there. Lot, a lot of paid, a paid, lot of paid, paid, paid um, followers. And right. I refuse to do that mm-hmm. because it's so disingenuous to what I'm doing. So I'm really proud of the numbers that they've climbed like that so organically. Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting is on social media, like companies, brands will look at my numbers and be like, hey, you know, why why are comments not as high as in other brands and things like that? I said, because you're talking to moms about sex. They don't want to publicly write their questions or their comments. But if I showed you my direct messages, you'd be shocked because that's where everyone talks to me because it's private. And how I see myself is I'm willing to be out there. I am willing to talk about it. I don't mind. I understand that not everybody's like that. And that's why I'm successful because I'm a voice for a generation of moms who are mute about it. The problems are there. It's just no one's talking about it. And I'm the one who's willing to be the mouthpiece. Does your husband, the hedge fund guy, does he talk about what you do with his colleagues? No. Well, a little bit. But it's uncomfortable for him, for sure. I would sure. imagine so. Yeah. It's uncomfortable. It's more comfortable now because it's been like a couple of years. At the beginning, it was really rough. My husband's a very private person. 
very private. Um, so that's challenging for sure. But we talk all the time. Are you okay if I say this? Are you okay if I talk about this? Um, and I've really scaled back in the past year or so involving him in any of my stories or my things because he doesn't really want to be a part of that. And that's not really the message anyway. You know, the message is about me, the woman. It's not about my marriage. I don't want my platform to be about my marriage. That's not what I'm interested in. And that's a little self-serving and it feels a little egotistical. So, Well, we want to thank you for being on our air. And again, if someone wants to go to your website, it is... Flirty, Flirty Girl, Girl Guide, dot, like a guidebook. Yes, dot com. That's right. And is there a phone number, people, or an email address for you? Absolutely. Brooke with an E at flirtygirlguide.com, all one word. And you can find me on Instagram at, at flirtygirlguide. You'll see a cute black and white picture of me. That's me. Great. Ardina, who do we have on for next week? Next week, we're going to do a show about a controversial topic where do you move your mistress into the house if, if your wife has Alzheimer's? Oh, you got, you got those three people? Well, we're lining it up, and Jerry Azar is going to be... Jerry, Jerry Azar is going to take... Well, he, can't, he will never so take... So two weeks in a row, he we will have never, sex. He will never well, take okay, Don's spot. Now, this is Westchester Ryan, the radio, on WVOX at WVOX.com. Everybody...